Chicago is one of the most race conscious cities in the country. You open up their papers or watch their TV, listen to their radio every day, and you'll hear stories about black churches, black funeral homes, black barbershops, black movies, black radio, black clothes, black music, black baseball teams, black football teams, black teachers, black schools, black neighborhoods. You get the picture. But last night in Chicago, 500 black people rampaged through the Magnificent Mile, the downtown, the the, the jewel of the whole dang region. And we can't get one TV station, one reporter, one anybody to lift their eyebrow and say, yeah, we had a bunch of black people rampaging through downtown Chicago last night, attacking people, using tasers, looting stores, defying police. Uh, committing robberies, all sorts of bad business. And all of a sudden, everybody in America's most race-conscious city decides they're going to go colorblind on us. You see, here's a little video from what we're seeing last night. Let's see some of the some of the news reports. You attend tonight, Chicago police arresting at least 30 teenagers after they converged on Millennium Park and the Mag Mile reportedly fighting, harassing people and disobeying police. Police say as many as 500 teenagers come, came off the red line about five o'clock and then walked around downtown. No reports of anyone seriously injured. A huge group of teenagers triggered a massive police response downtown. This video is from Michigan. Avenue right outside our Fox 32 studios south of the river. You can see one of the kids being taken into custody. The so-called wildings began this evening near Water Tower Place. Police tonight say they are still monitoring the group. Have been dealing with a crowd control problem in the heart of the downtown area. A large group of teens has descended on the area and is roaming the streets. Police say they have made arrests tonight. NBC 5's Michelle Relaford is live with the story. What do you have, Michelle? Well, Rob has been crazy out here, and things are not quite back to normal just yet at State and Lake. For the past 30 minutes or so, the chaos had been concentrated to this section over here near the Chicago Theater. Chicago police have been trying to get that group down into the red line. As many as 500 teens, they've been running in the street, running on the sidewalks, fighting, yelling at police, yelling at each other. Several arrests have been made. The group started forming downtown around 5 this evening and again grew to as many as about 500 teens, according to police, up to 200 police officers responding on foot, on bikes, on horseback. They've been trying to keep the peace. Chicago police say several teens have been arrested for harassing pedestrians, stealing cell phones, fighting or not obeying police orders. The challenge is to keep the public safety, to make sure that the citizens that come down here to enjoy uh, Chicago and enjoy downtown area, that they remain safe. And the challenge is the ones that don't want to comply and don't want to do the right thing, don't want to follow the law, those people will be arrested. Now, a number of officers remain positioned here at State and Lake trying to keep the peace. I should also include that Chicago Public Schools is on spring break right now, and police say they brought in CPS principals to talk to the kids and try to help control the crowds. I did ask one teen, what's the point of all of this? She told me, we just don't have anything else to do. Isn't it amazing? You've got 500 fellas and lovely ladies rampaging through downtown Chicago. Dozens and dozens of reporters are on the story, whether they're back in their office monitoring the police scanners or they're, you know, they're in their studios or they're actually out on the street trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Did you see one interview with one fella or one lovely lady asking what the hell's going on? Not one. All we get is that one reporter at the very last story we saw saying she talked to somebody and the reason they're down there destroying property, attacking tourists, uh, looting stores, there's a lot more looting going on that people and people in, in these stories acknowledge, uh, defying police, creating all sorts of havoc, mayhem, chaos the reason they're doing that is because well they really don't have any choice because they don't have anything else to do, we don't have anything else to do wow And let's bring in, I love that one line, let's bring in the principals. They're going to help control the students. (laughs) Who do you think's telling these kids that they're oppressed and they have the right to go out and create all sorts of chaos and mayhem if they don't have anything else to do in the first place? Where do you think they learn that? 
They learn it at home. They learn it at church. They learn it at music. They learn it on TV. They learn it in schools. The Chicago Sun-Times and the other daily paper in Chicago weren't, much, weren't any better. As a matter of fact, they featured, they talked a little bit more to that Captain Waller. He's the head of, they call him the head of patrol. He was the one down there explaining it all to us. He explained it all that, well, we've got some socioeconomic problems down here, and that's what we have to solve. 500 black people rampaging through downtown Chicago, and the black DA, the black mayor, the black chief of police, all the reporters who do nothing but report on black issues. Yeah, that's their title. That's why they get hired, to write columns and do news stories about black people. Nobody has one thing to say to even acknowledge that 500 black people are rampaging through Chicago, and they arrested 35 of them. Please, sir, I want some more. And if if it holds the form, most of the 35, they will not press they will not press charges on the 35 people they arrested. One of the papers that talked about, well, yeah, well, you know, this happens in other places, too, like Philadelphia. So, you know, why are you singling us out? I guess you could have read my book, Like I'll Bleed a Lot, or Don't Make the Black Kids Angry, and you would have had a lot more examples of these things happening besides just Chicago and Philadelphia, though those places do, they do happen there with kind of a special, a special frequency, a special vibe, a special regularity. And if you acknowledge that, well, apparently you're going to make a lot of black kids angry.